seems like since I've returned from deployment two years ago, anything that I want to do with the kids, she has something to say, or she wants to take them during that time. She's minimized my parenting time as much as she can. The kids learned about this church camp at Sunday school, and they asked me if they could go. I told them it's during my time. I didn't see why not. Go ahead. Um, I requested the right of first refusal for July 21st to July 26th, which is the dates of a camp um, that Mr. Elder had stated he would be placing our children. I think only our daughter is eligible. Our son is a little too young for the camp. It's based in Hutchison, Kansas, which is an hour from Salina and I believe um, an hour and a half from Wichita. Um, I'm going to be home during this time. I don't see a reason why our children need to be placed in an overnight camp when they could be with a parent instead. Um, I did request, um, explain my concerns to Mr. Elder. Uh, we had decided on our summer parenting plan in March of uh, March 20th. And then he had requested this change on June 6th. Um, and I stated at that time, I was not comfortable with our children being in an overnight camp. And um, I followed up to ensure that, you know, we weren't going to be going that route. I'd provided on the 6th several other day activities like a Descendants Theater camp that the kids were interested in, the Field House camp. Now, both of those were in Salina. Um, so I also provided an information on the Exploration Place camp there in Wichita. Um, I have a discount code because we keep a family membership. So I offered that as well. If Mr. Elder was needing childcare for that time, he stated it was not for childcare. It was just for um, enrichment opportunities. And I explained my stance. I'm very against overnight camps for children. Um, I don't feel safety wise. That's a, that's a good place for them to be. Uh, our daughter is 10 years old. Our son is eight. Um, and so six nights away, the, that's quite a bit. And so I did follow up on, June 23rd via Talking Parents to see, you know, what, what was the plan for that week and um, then filed the motion on the 25th. Mr. Elder. Yes. So it, it's actually really simple, Your Honor. Um, I told her that, you know, this is, this is my agreed parenting time. Um, it seems like since I've returned from deployment two years ago, uh, anything that I want to do with the kids, uh, she has something to say or she wants to take them during that time. Uh, she's minimized my parenting time as much as she can. Uh, the kids learned about this church camp at Sunday school and they asked me if they could go. I told them it's during my time. I didn't see why not. So I told Journey about it. And of course, she had an issue with something I wanted to do for them yet again. Uh, this is something that they wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to do unless they're with me. So I told them that I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, she disagreed. I told her if she disagrees, we can go to mediation or we can come to court. What kind of camp is this? It's a it's Kansas Bible camp. And do they what are the ages that are eligible to go? Uh, so my daughter is eligible this year. Uh, it is for ages nine and up. Uh, Evan would not be eligible yet. He would he's, not. He's only eight. And I, I did not realize that at the time. I was just running it by her to, you know, just keep her in the loop. Um, Because, they you know, they brought me a little pamphlet after Sunday school. And so that's when I asked her about it later on. And uh, I told him I didn't have an issue with it. But like I said, of course she did. So um, I just told her, you know, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to keep playing this game with you if I. Uh, if the kids want to do something during my parenting time, then I will allow it. She says that it's right of first refusal. Um, I disagree, and, and that's why we're here today. 
you know, I, I felt like right at first refusal, that's if I cannot have the kids. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. I can have them. I'll be visiting them while they're there. It's not an hour and a half away. It's about 50 minutes. Uh, they have a parent's day that we can come interact with the kids. Uh, like I said, it's something that they want to do and I have no no problem with. And I don't want to stop doing the things that we want to do on my side uh, just because she finds an issue with anything that we want to do. Uh, journey. Um, I definitely disagree, Your Honor. Um, I have not stated anything against things that they've been doing. They've been in VBS. They've been in, um, you know, motorcycle club meetings. They've been going to church. I've I've not stated any concerns about any of the summer activities outside of this overnight camp. Okay. Well, ten is usually the age kids can start doing overnight camps uh, that's not uncommon uh, so with that clarification it made sense to me i thought well evan's a little young at eight but uh 10 years old finishing you know fourth grade is the time that kids start going to camps so that's not unusual um the right of first refusal generally deals with if he would be unable to care for the children during his visitation rather than place them with a third person, then you would have the first option to to care for the children. This is not that situation. This is just a situation where uh, the child is signed up for an activity. So... It's better if you two can agree, but obviously you're going to hit points where you're not going to agree as the kids get older. Um, have you had a chance to look at the material from the... From I the have. Your Honor, I have lots of concerns. Uh, Mr. Elder and I do not um, agree on religious matters. He's... Um, much more conservative leaning than I am. Um, so the camp is very conservative in nature. The children don't have the option to have a cell phone except for in certain instances. There's um, information there on the website about, um, you know, modest dressing for girls and a lot of language that is very concerning to me as somebody who is a trained domestic sexual violence advocate who has spent 16 years professionally in this space in some form or matter um, when we place the burden onto girls for boys' thoughts, things like that. Um, also, there was no information provided to me by Mr. Elder about visitation, about this family day. Um, I had not received any of that. I did request a copy of the application. Um, I have not received that. I have no idea if I'm even, if my information is even on there or if he placed his wife's information. Mr. Elder. Yeah, uh, Your Honor, I, I haven't filled out an application. I merely told her about uh, my intentions to put them in that camp. I, like I said, I hadn't even fully looked into it until it turned into a big disagreement. At that time, I told her, uh, again, I've been saying for two years I want to go to mediation. But I said, if you have an issue with something, we you can take it to mediation or we can take it to court. You have adequate time before the camp starts. Uh, so the camp has not even started yet. We still have time to sign them up. Uh, I just figured that we would come here and see what you had to say before I did anything. Okay, well, camp, it starts, what, next week? Yes. On Sunday, Your Honor. Yeah, you're a week out from camp. Okay. Under the age of 12, I think it's best if both parents agree. Uh, once they have been completed sixth grade and it's a established camp, uh, if Mr. Elder wishes children to attend the summer camp on his time 
that is fine. Um, uh, once the children are 12, she's a little young. She's only 10. Now, that's not too young to go to camp. Uh, children start going to camp at 10, but the parents need to be in agreement. So does, I, it, does that go for all camps, Your Honor, or I just would, overnight camps? Well, this is overnight camps. Okay. Like if it were, if it were, you know, like go during the day, come home at night, that would be fine. Uh, and they may have an option to do that. I don't know. You'll have to check into that. But um, it's something that the two of you, when you're looking at overnight camp, the two of you need to really look at it and make sure that you're in agreement for it until the children are 12. Once they're 12, you know, then they're old enough to start uh, being able to discern what's kind of good for them, not good for them, um, a little less suggestive than what 10 and certainly 8 would be. So, the only issue I see with that, Your Honor, is, you know, obviously I can't prove it here today, uh, but just about anything that I want to do or that I mentioned for the kids, she has an issue with. So... You know, I understand that we need to wait a couple of years uh, if that's what you're uh, ruling. But <clears throat> just anything with the kids, she's going to have an issue with it if I propose it, you know, uh, whether it be for the good of the kids or not. Well, hopefully you'll work past that um, because you need to do what's best for the children. Okay. And, and I feel like this but is, you, this is something you, that co-parent you need to be able to reach agreement um and so under the age of 12 you both need to be in agreement if it's going to be overnight camping now if it's just day events and then they come home at night that's up to the parent who is in charge of the child that's agreeable your honor Now, as for uh, your motion, Mr. Elder. Yes. You filed a motion to modify and clarify parenting time? Yes. Okay. And I did note the original agreement back in March of 2020 uh, is basically, it's not unusual for a first ruling when the children are young to say the parents will agree because they generally tend to agree. It's when the children start to get older and when you end up moving to different towns from one another. And then um, you, you start having additional step parents now involved that we run into these problems. So this is not unusual, okay? This is almost foreseeable in this situation. So, Mr. Elder, what are what are you looking for in the way of clarification? So, as, as you stated, when that was ordered uh, at that time, we were pretty agreeable on everything. Uh, you know, I'm still active duty, so we disagreed at that time. Uh, for my summertime, she would give me all the time she could when I'm not off on orders training or deployed or whatever. Uh, and that was the case for a while. Uh, until I deployed. And uh, during my deployment, she would allow me one phone call per week for an hour maximum. That's it. If I missed that phone call, too bad. Wait till next week. Objection. No. As long as it was communicated that we needed a change in time. We set an hours because our children were in school full-time doing full-time activities. And he wanted them to be on a recorded zoom and so i requested that he set a standard time every week to communicate with our children and as long as he communicated a change due to you know his military needs or the kill the kids schedule i had no problem changing it and in fact had to a few times well obviously we want you need yeah, to be we'll have to agree to agree, and you're talking Your about past events. So yeah, so let's that's talk about the, the future. Yep, so that's one of the changes that I requested is that uh, 
during any military obligation that I have, I would like for my wife to still have my parenting time so that they can spend time with their siblings here and so that they can still see my side of the family. While I was deployed, they only got to see my side of the family two or three times. Um, I asked about that a bunch and it seemed to be an issue. So I just don't want to run into that issue moving forward when I'm deployed or I'm off on training. I would still like them to see my side of the family. Um, and clarification on that, Your Honor, I set up time with his sister and we had agreed on once every month or once every other month. She personally canceled it three times. One of those visits was due to weather, which was out of control. It was, you know, I think a January time frame. The other two she personally canceled. I never canceled. Uh, I, think what, time. I think what Mr. Elder is referring to is if it's, for example, his weekend and he may have obligations that the children still come and spend it with stepmom and and step siblings. Correct. Um, they were not. Um, they had just started dating during his deployment, which is why um, I set up parenting time with his sister during his deployment two years ago. Uh, and Mr. Elder, you've married. Yes, and and that's not true either, Your Honor. At that time, we were engaged. We had been together for at least a year, and. Um, so, and, and there, there was more than just, you know, the weekends with my sister, there was things, you know, I was saying, Hey, can the kids go to this birthday, their, their cousin's birthday party, or can they go to their, uh, soon to be stepsister's birthday party or different activities that I wanted them to be engaged in during deployment that she downright refused. Okay. Well, let's, again, let's work into the future. Um, uh, you know, his parenting time is his parenting time. And so if he has an obligation, the children would still spend it with his wife and her children. So that's not a right of first refusal situation. First refusal is when nobody, neither he nor his wife, can take the children for that visitation then rather than the way you have it is um, if he says, well, they could stay with my sister, then you have a right of first refusal if neither one of them could care for the children. But as long as he or his wife are available to care for the children, it would still be his time. And I'm open to um, going through the parenting plan. I don't agree with everything he's listed on here. Um, and believe we could um, do well with, you know, a mediation and go through some further events that probably need clarified that weren't added in here and then kind of talk through the things that he has added on here, um, such as trying to force the meeting at each other's houses. Um, we live an hour and a half away from each other meeting in the middle works best. And, you know, we've, we've got a great spot in Heston, Kansas that has worked well for us. Your honor, can I chime in? Yes. So it was never an issue. We've always lived an hour and a half from each other. I lived in Hayes. She lived in Salina. Now I live in Wichita. She lives in Salina. Uh, I moved, I moved, for the military. Um, it was never an issue for me to pick up the kids at her house when it was my parenting time and for her to pick up the kids at my house. I felt like that's better than subjecting the kids to being out and about and unpacking bags and loading them into another car and all of that. That changed for her when I came home from deployment and she realized that I'm in a serious relationship. At that point, she brought police to my house because she stated that she was scared of me at that point. I don't know why. She has no proof, no evidence. I've never threatened her, although she says that I have. She's made multiple social media posts talking about how abusive of a person I am all of a sudden. Right. 
Uh, again, where... again, let's let's not dwell on past events. Let's look okay. at now and into the future. So okay. that's I would like to keep the same thing that we've always done, which is I pick up the kids from her house. The kids can just come out the door, hop in the truck with dad. She picks up the kids from my house. It's the same driving distance. Uh, it makes things easier for the kids, less confusing in public when there's no existing threat. She says that there is and there hasn't been. I would like to keep the same thing moving on for the future. And I, again, disagree. I think a public meeting place has worked well these last two years. Um, it gives the chance to get for the kids to get out, stretch their legs. They get a stack at Casey's, the, you know, use the restroom because that is a long drive and three hours round trip for on a Friday night versus an hour and a half drive is much more doable. Is there a reason why it doesn't work to, to meet halfway? Uh, because I would like to keep the same thing for the kids. The kids have also stated that, what, Daddy, why can't you come to our house? Journey has told me if I show up to her house, she will call the police. She's she's inflated everything that the police need to be involved, that I'm some abusive father. The kids okay. have caught on to that. Well, right, right now, Mr. Journey, we're only talking about traveling. So when you're exchanging for a weekend, you're talking Friday evening, and, and it is easier if both parties go, you know, about 75 minutes and then home 75 minutes is a lot easier than if you drive an hour and a half and drive home an hour and a half. That's a long trip. So the, 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 uh, the other problem that I expressed to her that I have with it is if my wife is working or she has something going on, not only do I have to leave the house on Friday and Sunday now, uh, if I have to drag my kids out with me instead of just getting out in about one day, like we used to always do, you know, I have, I have a family now. I have two other kids. You know, when I go out to pick up the kids, a lot of times I got to load the baby up both times. You know, I don't see the point of me being on the road Friday and Sunday and her being on the road Friday and Sunday when I can take Friday and she can take Sunday. And it's the same time and distance. It is the same time and distance. The difference is what works for the parties. Yeah. And it, that really doesn't work for me. I've been doing it because I've had to, because she's told me that she'll call the police on me, you know, and I don't want to subject the kids to that. She's involved the police already. The kids had to see that and were crying and it was not necessary. Uh, so I've avoided that until we could go to mediation. I've been asking for mediation. I set up mediation. She refused to do it. Uh, and I have email traffic of me actually establishing a, a time for us to go. She couldn't pay for it at that time. So I offered to pay for all of it. She still wouldn't go. That I told her it doesn't work for me. Two years ago, your honor, my mom was literally in the ICU with a brain aneurysm bleed. At you, that brought, time. you both brought up that topic. Obviously, you can have the court set your time or you can mediate time. Which do you prefer? I think we're past mediation now, Your Honor. We're here in front of you. So I proposed my parenting plan that I've been asking for all of this time. She didn't want to go to mediation. I feel like it's reasonable. So I have it okay. before you to hopefully sign. Well, if the, if the parties can agree, and you certainly make a valid point, uh, Mr. Elder, on it being for you more convenient to make one long trip, one long three-hour trip. Although with a baby, I'm never not sure anytime you're talking a three-hour trip it's a good trip well I, let me clarify your honor i can coordinate one day you know for hey make sure mama has the baby on friday she doesn't have to work that day you know uh but if i have to coordinate both days that's very inconvenient for me or i have to bring my family out right, well, i can count on one hand the number of times he's he's had to bring his if, family if you two can agree, that's great. If you can't agree, then normally the parties meet halfway because that way it's it does end up being more convenient for both. Even though you're both on the road twice, it's a shorter trip. And once again, Your Honor, this is just her forcing the situation to get her way. Well, Mr. Journey, it's just the reality of, of children have to be exchanged. 
Okay, that's the reality when you live an hour and a half apart. Children have to be exchanged. If you can, if you agree to do one of you drive all the way for the drop off and one drive all the way for the pickup, that's fine. That's between the parties. If you can't agree, then you meet in the middle. Can you look at her justification for wanting to do so? Her justification is that she's scared of me, that supposedly I've threatened her, and that she wants to do it in front of cameras in a public place. I've never done anything like that. And putting that idea into my kids' heads, they're going to see that eventually, thinking that dad's some dangerous person, that mom has to meet in public so dad doesn't do something to her. Well, That's not true. Mr. Journey, this has nothing to do with, and the meeting in public is a good thing for an exchange. This simply has to do with travel and exchange. If you can agree, one of you do the pickup and one do the drop off and one make the long trip and the other one not, that's fine. If you cannot agree, then you meet in the middle. That's standard with with all the visitations. Okay. Um, I can make that change in there. You, then it's it's a, then you meet in the middle, but if it works for one of you, you know, there's going to be times when when uh, she may have something where she says, hey, I really can't make the trip on Sunday. Can can I do the full drive on Friday and you do the full drive on Sunday? And that's fine. And you two can agree to do that. If you don't agree, then you fall back to the safety net of the court orders. Right. You're going to have to work with each other. You know, you've got another 10 years until Evan is 18, you still have to work together and cooperate with one another in parenting these children. So if that works, do that. Anytime you two can agree, you agree. Anytime you can work it out, work it out. If you can't work it out, you fall back to the court orders, which is your safety net. Okay? Court orders are your safety net. Otherwise, as parents, work with each other and reach agreement. So it's fine if, if it works for you, one of you to make the full trip on Friday night and one of you to make the full trip on Sunday, that's fine. But if you don't agree, then the court order, the safety net is you meet halfway on both exchanges. Okay? I just don't find justification for her, her reason for changing it, Your Honor. We well, always did that. It's, it's not a matter of reason. It's just a matter of that's how visitation yeah. works. Is, Understood. You meet halfway. Okay. Yep. If you. And then that would go the same way once I move out of state and I'm not able to have my weekends, then I would have the whole summer. She would have the whole school year. Once you're out of, once, it, once you get to where you're too far for the every other weekend, then you build in, yeah, a different time. It would be the entirety of the summer with her having the two week vacation because you realistically are not going to be getting every other weekend during the school year, if you live that far away. Okay. So the same thing, you, you end up losing that every other weekend, then you need to be more vigilant with one another to provide time that you can when you mm -hmm. have a school break. You know, if they're out for quote, uh, spring break, make arrangements for them to spend a week with dad. If, right. You know, if they have a quote, fall break, and they have that week, a whole week, make arrangements for them to spend that time with dad. Um, and then same thing with your Christmas holiday. Uh, you look at that and make sure you split that down the middle so that they can spend at least a week quality time with dad. When, and when, that's what we do now currently. They can Robert. make that longer trip. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what we do now. And they spent spring break with him last year or this, this year, the 2024. So look at those opportunities in the school calendar to do that. Once you're moved out of state and relocate Mr. Elbert for now, let's just flip the, the summer or the, the summer schedule from the school schedule where they reside with you every other weekend with her 
but you both have your quote summer vacation up to two weeks with the kids and that includes the weekend time i can do that would you like me to okay. uh make those edits to the parenting plan that i submitted and resubmit it to the court Yes, you'll need to do that, but resubmit it to Journey, have her approve it, and then submit it to the court. And I'll give you my notes that I have, and we can schedule a time to talk through those. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. And again, Thank you, Your Honor. things are going to change, particularly when Clarissa gets into middle school. She's going to have other activities and things. You're going to have to work with each other uh, to make sure that his parenting time doesn't get trumped by every little activity that can pop up in middle school. Well, in your honor, I, I calculated it last night and in our, we have the talking parents communication and in the 23 months since he's returned, I have put in 88 calendar invitations about appointments, surgeries, um, games, school events, conferences, plays. Mr. Elder has attended four of those, four of those events. Yeah. So he is being provided all of that information as soon as I receive it. So, he, Your Honor, he, can I add in? I what? I don't want this to sound disrespectful, but she is being dramatic. She oh. at, she puts every little thing in there. Like the kids have a dentist appointment while she knows I'm at work. The kids have this. The kids have that while she knows I'm at work. Well, I, I told her it's to nice it. for her. It's nice for her to communicate with you. That doesn't mean right. you're going to take her up on all those. What I'm talking about is once. Clarissa gets into junior high, things like going to the Friday night football game become important. Right. So your exchange is now you're looking at, you know, maybe a Saturday morning rather than a Friday night, but then staying a little later on Sunday. As the kids get older and their activities change, you're going to have to be a little flexible with each other because you also have to keep in mind you're doing this for best interest of the kids. Right. Okay. Now, just like this religion camp, you know, at 12, he can sign her up. But if you look at the material and you're okay with it and he wants to sign her up next year at age 11, that's fine. Use the court order as your safety net if you don't agree. Otherwise, what you two can agree on in the best interest of your children is what you should be doing. Okay. The court okay. orders are your safety net if you can't agree. Otherwise, look at your kids' schedule, look at your schedules, work with each other to maximize time for the children to maintain relationship with both parents. Okay? So right now we'll do school year, journey, summers with John, you know, every other weekend, except you have your two week vacations built into that schedule. Then during the school year, if they have a fall break for a week, if they have a spring break for a week, you know, try to let them maximize that time with John. Mm -hmm. so that they have that lengthy quality time. All right. I think we're good, Your Honor. Any other questions, Mr. Elder? I don't believe so. Any other questions, Ms. Elder? Uh, not on my end, Your Honor. Okay. And you've got Lee behind your name. Have you gone back to Lee? Um, I I uh, legally changed my name, Your Honor. I did send a copy of that to the court when I did that um, a couple of years ago. Um, so, yes, my legal name is now Journey Allison Lee rather than Journey Lee Elder. My apologies. I didn't realize that. <laughs> That's okay. I can resend a copy if needed. I'm trying to encourage them not to be on electronics as much and actually play with the other siblings while they're here. But I make sure that he still has that time to call his mom pretty much on a daily basis. So I just, I'm not getting that in return. Well, hopefully it'll work out. Yep. If it doesn't, that's where I come in. 